welcome to the Dern TV where you can find out what's happening in our school community. I'm Caden McKennan. And I'm Aaron Fox. In today's episode we will hear from Miss Mercer about students' reflections on remembrance and how we mark the day here at the Dern. Miss Forrest will tell us all about the Indian Religion Festival of Deer Valley. There's a brand new recommended read from Miss Faulkner. Mr Guy will explain to us about the cadets where recently put through their paces. We will celebrate the rewards for all students across the academy. And we'll introduce the new gallery features where we celebrate some amazing artwork from our students. The winner in our pumpkin carver competition will be announced. And of course we will have the latest out of point updates. But first over to Miss Mercer to hear about Remembrance Day. Hi, my name is Miss Mercer. I'm Head of History at Australia Academy Dern. This week we've spent a lot of time thinking about remembrance and thinking about those of risk their lives throughout the wars and contribute to the wars as well. So here's just some comments from a few students reflecting on what they've learned about remembrance and why it's important. We learn about Remembrance Day to show our support for the people that lost their lives in, the, in World War One and Two. Remembrance is important because we need to remember the people who fought for our country and celebrate them because so many people risked their lives and died. Remembrance is important because we might not be here today if it weren't for the brave soldiers. The Poppy The Poppy is a symbol of remembrance, worn every November to commemorate members of the armed forces who gave their lives in war. Its origins go back to the First World War. Amongst the churned up soil and shell holes of the battlefields of the Western Front, poppies would grow even when nothing else could. They would give Canadian doctor, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, inspiration while serving in Ypres in the spring of 1915 after recently losing his friend. He would write the now famous poem in Flanders Fields. The poem would go on to be published in a London-based magazine called Punch. In 1918, in response to McRae's poem, American academic Moena Michael was inspired to make and sell red silk poppies and campaigned to make the poppy a symbol of remembrance to those who had died in the war. The Royal British Legion formed in 1921 and ordered 9 million of these poppies, selling them on the 11th of November that year in support of ex-servicemen and the families of those who had died in the conflict. The poppies sold out immediately and raised a considerable amount of money the funds went on to be used to help First World War veterans with employment and housing. Because the poppy appeal was so popular, the British Legion set up a poppy factory, employing ex-servicemen to produce them. This continues today, with the Legion producing millions of poppies each year. The arts team created a fantastic art installation to mark Remembrance Day here at the Dern. As a school, we also held a well-observed two-minute silence congratulations Congratulations to everyone involved for creating such an impressive display and being so respectful. Students are earning rewards and recognition for their hard work across the academy. Congratulations to Bradley George in Year 7 and Harvey Jack Farr in Year 9 who have received their commendation certificates. Before half term, we handed out the first Team Rook Dern Rewards for students nominated by their heads of year. Here is a list of the successful students. The Valley is the Indian Festival of Light and is celebrated this year on the Saturday the 14th of November. Here's Miss Forrest with some more information. Hi everyone, so I'm back again to tell you some beautiful religious news. So on Saturday the 14th of November is Diwali. So this is a festival that Hindus celebrate. So the ancient story goes there was a prince and princess, Rama and Sita, Ravana, who was a ten-headed demon, decided to steal the princess away. What Rama decided to do them was to try and win her back. I got Hanuman, the monkey god, big massive war, and that they won over. What the villagers did though, so Rama and Sita could find their way home, was like lots of little candles in their windows so that princes and princesses could get home. So every single year Hindus will celebrate Diwali by cleaning their house, wearing new clothes, um, giving gifts, fireworks and putting little diva lamps which is small candles in their windows to celebrate that every single year. So it coincides with sort of like what um, we might have all done for bonfire night. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know. It's time now for this week's recommended read over to Miss Faulkner to tell us all about it. Hi, Miss Faulkner here, giving you my recommended read of the week. Seeing as it's been Halloween recently, I decided to recommend a piece of Gothic literature, which is one of my absolute favourites. It's The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. 
Um, so this book tells the story of a young man called Dorian Gray, who is completely and utterly beautiful, but he doesn't realise how beautiful he is. That's until his friend paints his portrait. And when he sees his portrait and realises how beautiful he is, he trades his soul in order to stay young and beautiful forever. It's his portrait then that bears the marks of all of his sins as he lives a life of complete immorality. Um, and things turn pretty dark pretty quickly. Um, despite of all of his horrific actions, he stays young and beautiful forever as his portrait grows more and more ugly. Um, it's one of my favourite books and if you like something a little bit dark, a little bit creepy, I would definitely recommend it. So that's The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Just before half turn, the cadets were involved in tactical manoeuvres using paint guns. Here's Mr Guy to tell us more. Hi there, welcome to Australia Cadets here at the Dern. We've just done a firing exercise with paintballs here on the school field. Uh, we've currently got year 10s uh, going through the different skills that they're going to need to learn. And then after half term, we're hoping that year eights and nines will be able to join us. There should be a letter coming out uh, for you guys to come and join us here and do this sort of uh, activity. After Christmas, we've also got a weekend away planned in January. Hopefully another one planned for uh, around April, May time and then annual camp for a week in the summer. So there's plenty of exciting stuff and opportunities that you're not going to get anywhere else here with the Australia Cadets. Standing, three round. artistic talents of our students we are going to feature some outstanding work in the gallery let's have a look at the amazing work being produced <laughs> made a real effort for our school pumpkin carving competition. Here is Mr Oliver with some news of the winning entries. Good morning Australia Dern and um, thank you so much to everybody who uh, got involved with our Big Dern Carve Off competition, our pumpkin carving competition. We had lots of entries, we had some uh, amazing ones, some interesting ones and uh, some ones that frankly kept me up at night. Um, but thank you so much to everybody who uh, got involved. Um, but there can be only a few winners and uh, first of all our student winners. In third place, we have George Bryant. Well done, congratulations, that's amazing. There's gonna be house points coming straight to you. In second place, we have uh, Finley O'Grady. Well done, an amazing piece of pumpkin carving there, really impressed. And our overall winner for this year's, uh, I'm gonna call it an annual pumpkin carve off, um, was uh, Luke Jarvis. Well done, massive congratulations to you. And uh, for our staff as well, we also uh, had one for the staff at the Dern to get involved. Thank you to everyone that did. We had some brilliant stuff again. Uh, in third place, we had uh, Miss South. 
Uh, congratulations to you, amazing result there. Uh, in second place, uh, we had um, uh, Miss Pollard, well done over in Humanities, outstanding there. And in first place, the winner of our staff carve off person was Mr. Wordsworth. So uh, we also have an Only a Mother Would Love It award um, and it was so difficult this year because there were so many of them um, that we windled it down to two and our two favourites for the Only a Mother Would Love It award is Mr Atkinson and Mr Richardson. Thank you so much for getting involved, thank you to everyone and please do look out for any further competitions from us at the Arts. Now it's time to look at the latest leaderboard in our school house competition. Pegasus maintained their grip on the first place with 3,248 points. Phoenix are close behind in second place with 3,102 points. Titans are in third this week with 2,960 points. And Sphinx are in fourth with 2,948 points. Griffins are in fifth this week with 2,187 so points. So Pegasus continue to be the team to beat. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for watching Dirt TV. Until next time, bye. Bye.